Il-ġima l-ohra tkellimna fuq it-timijiet ta' sale GP u da kullu li sar fix-xhur li għaddew. Illum se nsegwu dak li jagħmel it-tim danis tul ix-xahar ta' ġunju. Naraw kif it-tim ngħeda akkademja żażagħ interessati fil-burdjar li sem ta' Rock the Boat. Din l-akademja tnedit biex dawn il-baħara professjonisti jagħtu xi ħaġa lura lis-soċjetà daniża billi rawmu baħara daniżi żażagħ għall-futur. For this year to be a success for me, it would mean that when we sit on the F50 next year in San Francisco and look back, all I want to be able to say is that we had the maximum we could out of this year and we gained the most we could. It's been a great day, you know, it's been a long day. It's getting late here in, in Aarhus, but, but it's been a very, very good day. Um, we had lots of guests and, and people coming supporting us and, and welcoming our new team, Rock Wheel Racing. Uh, so it's, it's been a fantastic day. And, and we're very grateful that we can share such you know, positive news that we're going to be busy sailing different events and doing records and coverage sailing. And we just, you know, we just got a great season ahead of us. So we turned a, turned a difficult year into a, a very positive and, and, and great season. Thanks to Rockwell for the support for, we can now keep improving as a team. So yeah, happy day and, and happy to share this with everyone else. First, first day out foiling on the, on the new GC32 and it was uh, a lot of fun. I think we all had a good time and uh, everyone's happy. That's been awesome. awesome. Yeah. Awesome is the word for it. So nice to be out foiling. So nice to go sailing with the boys. Perfect conditions. And the boat was ripping along beautifully. The GC32 that we're sailing the next few months is, is not that far off the F50. Obviously, it's, it's slower and it's, it's a, you know, a more old school design, but we can still you know, use the boat for a lot of development and a lot of training. And, and we will be better in the F50 when, when that time comes thanks to this TC32. So it's, it's a good platform for us for you know, developing, getting strong as a team, but also for involving you know, Danish fans and supporters around the country, and that's a huge part for us. So yeah, we're launching Rock the Boat Academies, where we're gonna spend some, some weekends with youth sailing and, and youth sailors and, and take them out and give them an experience in the disc boat, but also coach them in their own boat and, and try to you know, show them a path if they really enjoy sailing, if they wanna make it you know, a, a path of their own, we're happy to support them and give them some feedback on how to do that. I think the most important thing to do well in CLGP and in most sports is, is the team. Like you have to be a tight team, you have to be working well together, knowing each other well and just be an all-round solid team. And, and you only become that if you're spending time together and if you're sailing and you, if you develop it together. So it, it wouldn't have been you know, working for us if we just went away for a few months and then come back and start sailing at 50. It wouldn't have gone well. So this is the only way forward for us to be strong as a team. And, and it's great that Rockwell really pushes us this way as well and see the same, you know, same strengths and, and challenges ahead. The Road Academy comes back to the culture of the team. It comes back to the legacy we want to build. We're not just here to, to win races. We want to win races, but we're also here to create something larger and, and bigger for, for Danish sailing in the future, a legacy. And, and that's exactly what Rock the Boat is. We, we want to take youth sailors out and show them that's, you know, there's a different path to sailing than just sailing day in and day out in the, in the Olympic boat. You know, you can, you can go all the ways about it and enjoy sailing, have fun, and still, you know, make it to, to the top. And so we're inviting all different kinds of, of fast dinghies where we can you know, teach them and they can share different experiences from boat to boat. And, and if we can just have a few more sailors you know, staying in the sport or, 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 or help creating the sport, then perfect. Rock Hard Gym is about one thing, and that's self-confidence. And that's I definitely saw today. But before we go down there and show what we're capable of, I want everybody to take your arms up, your sheaths up, if you want. Show off those muscles, show some confidence. Yeah. And then on three, we're gonna say rock hard, okay? One, two, three, rock, rock hard! hard. you're gonna do in a time period of seven minutes. Cut a little bit down, cut a little bit high. Today is the first day, first morning of the Rock the Boat Academy. We're uh, trying to help these young guys on the wasps and uh, give them a little taste of the foiling and what it's like 
from our side, our experience. I'm Nikolai, and I'll introduce the team in a second, but we're very happy to have you. hosted the first uh, Rock the Boat Academy here in Copenhagen. It's, uh, it's been fantastic. Great weather, great sailing and fantastic young people uh, coming and joining us here. SailGP has this fantastic Inspire program where they try to inspire young sailors to, to go down that path and, and we want to do the same here in Denmark. We want to make sure there's a legacy after what we've been, been sort of trying to create and, and that's what this is all about, Rock the Boat Academy. learn as much as I can from these guys. They have uh, been in the game for so long and uh, know how it should be done and then hopefully we can uh, learn a thing or two and bring it to my own sailing career at one point. In the end of the day, we, you know, we're probably looking at the next GP sailors here for, for the Danish team and, and that's very cool to get to know these guys this early and spend time with them. That was fantastic, good feeling, uh, wonderful uh, children, youth, teenagers. Uh, and I think the exchange between the professionals and, and the sailors was fantastic. Yeah. Really good day. It's super fun to be back at, at KDY in the, in the club. I have the Rock the Boat Academy. It's like you you go back to where you started. It's like you not finishing the circle, but the, you're getting back in the circle and, and getting a slingshot to make it even bit, bit bigger for the younger guys and, and for yourself. So the circularity in, in, in that is um, it's super fun to experience. I think this Rock, Rock the Boat Academy means a lot, not just in the way of, of, of us learning them how to, 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 to use the boat or sell the, sell the Twin Nine on the West. That, that's a, 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 I think it's very, very learning for them. But uh, I think it's also to show what, what we're doing and, and how, how we work and how we pr proceed uh, with, a, with a problem or a, a challenge on the boat. Jarraf Nikov programmi passati it-tim ta' Oracle huwa l-moħ wara la mont kbir ta' data li tasal waqt it-tlila mid-dajjes. Din id-data tiġi analizzata minn kull tim rispettiv u minn hemm dawn it-timijiet dejjem ipprovaw it-tejbu l-prestazzjoni li jmiss. Issa se nsegwu kif it-tim ta' SailGP tal-Istati Uniti uża din id-data biex isib il-bilanċ delikat u meħtieġ bejn il-veloċità u r-riskju. Ħansegwu. sessions we noticed visually that the Brits appeared to be flying higher than other teams. The first thing that we did when we came in off the water was pull the data from the Oracle Cloud to try and verify that observation. All the teams know that flying higher means that you have less drag, but it's also risky, and it's helpful to use the data to get an idea of where we are relative to the rest of the teams. From looking at the data, we were able to identify ride height as an area that we could push harder and on the first race day, that's what we did. We feel like it worked well for us. If you look at the first race day, we had an awesome back and forth with GBR. This is the USA, Great Britain, here is the camera, and they're both pulling over 40 knots. The guys knew that they had to push the ride height, and you can see they're significantly higher on average. This is about the first 30 seconds of that downwind. The USA was flying at 1.1 meters or higher above the water, doing 41.5 knots, whereas the Brits are flying much lower. They're about 0.9 meters, doing about 39 knots. So it seems really small, but actually that can make a significant difference in your downwind boat speed.
wissu na qattimi horma sejl GP din it-tarba team min New Zealand. Dan it-team għandu li żewġ medalisti olimpiċi kufu koll champions renjanti tal-Amerikas Cup Peter Berling u Blair Tuk fit-tmexxija ta' dan it-team. It-team ta' New Zealand se jissiħeb ma' live ocean racing biex jikomplu jqajmu kuxienza dwar l-importanza li nipproteġu l-oċejan. Għan sejgu. Blair and myself are incredibly proud this morning to announce the launch of the New Zealand SailGP team. The SailGP League's really turning into one of our sports premier events and that's that sort of close racing year round, high performance boats uh, drew us to it and you know it's going to really complement the other commitments we have with the America's Cup and Olympic sailing. We've always been incredibly proud to represent Aotearoa and now we're proud to represent it in what is proving to be one of our sports emerging premier events. Now when it came to the design of the boat, it was important to us that the New Zealand Sail GP team symbolise what it means to be a Kiwi. You know, the, the boat looks absolutely amazing, you know, it's something that we're really looking forward to, to getting out there and racing and you know, being able to represent our country in you know, a pretty cool circuit like this. We'd just like to personally thank you Russell for giving us this incredible opportunity. We're really proud to be joining the Sail GP League and to build this New Zealand team. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Russell Coots. I speak on behalf of Sal GP when I say that we're all absolutely thrilled to welcome you to this league. This is a great opportunity for Pete and Blair and in many ways it's their time. They've had a fantastic start to their sailing careers and they've already achieved much more than what uh, anyone could expect to achieve. They're incredibly talented sailors but they're also just playing good guys on top of it. Some of the best sailors in the world are there, or most of the best sailors in the world are there, to be honest, and you know, it's gonna be a, a big challenge for us to win, but that's, that is the drive, just to you know, go give our best shot and you know, to, to come out on top at the end of season two and, uh, and onwards. So uh, it's gonna take a lot of work, but you know, we love challenges and, and we're up for it. Australian Tessail GP u a team iħor li tuħu laħarxu ni da numru ta' filmati eskusivi dwar da kollu li ġarraf lo estaġun ta' Sail GP. Dawni filmati jihuduna sa' rebħa ta' xompa la' Champions ta' Sail GP f'Marsej is-sena l-ohra. Nara wukol xie momenti komi ċita dan il-team għabi li tini staġun, staġun li sforto nadamenti dan bis aċar team kollux. Jitkelmu bejn jithun dwar it-lila tal-passat per is li numru gbir ta' dan il-team ilo mitil u flemkin mill-2012 laħun. u ħut minnum bi kompetu fl-Amerikas Cup f-Bermuda fl-2017. Għan segu. <laughs> We're not doing that. Okay, ready, Granny? Yeah, ready. And Team Australia has dominated the opening leg of the Sail GP series on Sydney Harbour, led by Olympic champion Tom Slingsby. Has this revolutionised your sport? In a while? It really has. I mean, sailing, it sort of gains a lot of media attention every four years, whether it's the Olympics, whether it's uh, the America's Cup. They happen every four years, and then it sort of disappears. Take a bow, you've won in San Francisco. <laughs> I've got a lot of confidence in our team, and uh, I, I believe we've got the best team on the water. When we put things together and we just do what we know we can do, we sail exceptionally. Just... This is an annual circuit. It's racing consistently around the world. Um, events every month or two and yeah nation versus nation competition in the fastest sailing boats in the world. Tom Slingsby has guided Australia to another masterclass in the European debut of the Sail GP. In some pretty wild oh. weather many teams struggled but not wow. the Australians who dominated the field while also becoming the first crew ever to break the 50 knot speed barrier. For sure competing for your country and as you see with the boat it's um, a big green and gold boat with the kangaroo on it and all Australian team. It for sure is um, very emotional when you get on the boat and you do well. Tom Slingsby 
has led Australia to a history-making Sail GP Championship in France. As well as the trophy and all those celebrations, Australia picked up $1 million US, the largest monetary prize in sailing. No wonder they're celebrating. How dramatic is it when you're out there and you are behind and you know there's a million dollars on the line here? He's just really trying to focus on your processes. Um, it's just another day in the office a bit for us and you know you're... I don't know, office, mate. <laughs> yeah, we, we knew we were behind um, from the start and we just try to stay really focused and just do our jobs as best as possible. And it wasn't until we crossed the line and we checked the display to say Australia finished that we just let loose and really enjoyed the moment. <laughs> Recording in three, two. Okay, action. Uh, testing, one, two, three, four, five. Unique New York. Silver Fox. What's Silver Fox? It's me. Uh, for sure, there's a lot of pressure on us to perform, um, defending champions. Uh, but uh, for me, this is a chance for my legacy in, in sailing. I've, I've won the uh, Olympics, I've won the America's Cup, I've won South GP before, but now we've got a higher level of competition. We've got the greatest Olympic sailor of all time, Ben Ainsley here, and there's nothing better for my personal legacy and the legacy of all our team to go out there and beat one of the greatest has ever been. In boxing, they always say to, uh, to be the best, you've got to beat the best. If we go and beat those guys in exactly the identical boats on the same racetrack, uh, it sort of cements our legacy as, as one of the best teams ever. It's a bit far-fetched saying best teams ever, but cut that out. Yeah, no worries. Really old, Ted. He's been changing over the years, isn't he? These guys were saying... Um, unflappable. These guys were saying last night he was up lower, not staying because they left at 10.30. Africa not stay long. I'm just excited about Kinley, you know, to be lucky enough to work alongside such a well-known hero in our sport. It's been quite an honour. Sorry guys, just at work here. Yeah. What was that, Tom? Yeah. yeah, the first thing we did on the first day when we got here was uh, we sat down with our coach, Philippe, and um, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, looking at last season, we, we thought of all the things that we could have done better and, and we redesigned a couple of things in our playbook. Uh, what, what do we, um, what's your plan? Obviously today's our first day back in six months. We get out there and just do a couple of laps by ourselves. Just get the feel and the muscle memory back. And then uh, after a few laps by ourselves, then we look at making it a bit tougher. We've got a, got a few different people doing different things at different times, but um, yeah, when you watch the racing, you might find out what it is. I've got, I've got the lured side, you've yep. got the windward side yep. as the sheet's unloaded, yep. but as we jive back, you've got the sheet, and uh, I'll fire the board. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah. You happy for me to twist around the muff too? As you wish. You know, why am I even asking you? I'm just going to do it. <laughs> yeah. no, no, Jason, I'm not happy with that. <laughs> but you'll do camber, right? Because that's the bigger one. Yeah, yeah, it's coming in. scared at times but it's okay he's all right now have you settled down i was a little scared at times you were a little scared and that's okay i'm not giving you anything about that it's it's, yeah it's been a while so i'm asking you how much cooler this is like last season we were just trying to learn how to do the maneuvers we did in bermuda yeah and now we're doing stuff we've never done before yeah, that's yeah. cool that's sick so much fun yeah. i remember when we just learned to foil and um we're doing 30 knots downwind it's like 
18 knots of breeze and uh, JK goes, stand by jibe. And I go, I'm not crossing the boat while it's foiling. <laughs> and he's like, okay, let's sit her down and jibe. I was too scared to cross. <laughs> but it was on day one. Yeah, well, it's my first day on the boat. My first day uh, on the boat was the capsize. Oh I was a guest one day. My first day, Sam's first day. Really? Yeah. yeah. Everyone's going to see that. Where, where no, we'll go for my first sail on the boat. I'm like, what happened? How's your day, boy? Oh, it was good. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. The boat's still out at sea. The boat's on its way to Hawaii.